Hello, my name is Ben Petrie. I'm a real estate agent in San Miguel de Allende in the state of Guanajuato in central Mexico. I also write for a terrific blog called expatsinmexico.com. As a result of that, people write me with all sorts of questions about life here, how do you do this, how do you do that, um, all the kinds of things that affect them. So I really want to thank Dave Gray, who wrote and suggested that I talk about medical care and dental care. So first of all, uh, dental care is really excellent in Mexico. Just like in the U.S., there are good dentists and bad dentists. But in general, we have some excellent dentists. A big chunk of them are trained in the U.S., and that means, of course, that they speak and understand English really well. If they are one of those people, they will advertise that typically in their announcements of their practice. Um, and dental tourism is a big issue here. People will often come for two or three weeks or longer and have a whole series of procedures. And I think generally that comes in at about a quarter to a third of the price you would pay in the U.S. But, of course, that varies a lot depending on the market you're in in the U.S. and what dentists are in, so you might find. So um, that is the case for every major city in Mexico. Uh, excellent English-speaking dentists exist, uh, not just San Miguel. So you can go to Mexico City, go to Guadalajara, go to Puerto Vallarta as you wish. Uh, medical care is also excellent. Um, there is a national system which will take anybody and treat them for anything they need. Uh, most expats do not seek um, that service, even though they are entitled to it for a, a small annual fee. Uh, because while the services are generally good, they are sometimes uneven. Like I've known people who have had seven prescriptions but never had more than four of them filled at one time because the formulary just didn't have the drugs um, in stock. Uh, and then there is a private system. And the private system is generally excellent and at prices that are quite attractive in comparison to U.S. costs. Um, for many of the people who come to live here, the question of will they be treated at home or will they be treated here? Do they sign up for Medicare? Or what do they sign up for? And so on. And um, people are, are, I think, about evenly split on that. Um, some of that is that people are more concerned about just want to receive their treatment in the U.S. And, and, and feel good about that. And then it also really comes down to, to do you have um, friends and family that you're totally happy to stay with? If you have um, friends who live a mile from the Houston Medical Center and they'd be delighted if you came and stayed with them for four or five months, um, probably Medicare turns out to be a better deal. But if you look at it from the perspective of here and what the costs of the co-pays are, and the expense and the hassle connected with traveling to wherever for those services. And sometimes they can be weekly treatments for 12 weeks or something like that, which really takes you away from home for a long time and I think is pretty generally tiring. Uh, so an awful lot of people choose uh, to just uh, have treatment here in Mexico. Um, insurance is available. I think it becomes fairly difficult to get after you are 65. Um, but some insurance is available. But when you look at the costs of the procedures, um, they stack up favorably with the copay you have in the U.S. So um, I will I will probably do some interviews with people who have made this choice, um, and it, it and it just depends on so many things. I mean, your personal preference. It may also depend on the the level of treatment you need in the in the future and so forth, which of course nobody can really know. Um, but I think that's about it. This is a, a good country to have medical and dental treatment and um, either as a dental or medical tourist or as a person who comes to live here, you can be confident that you will be well treated if you need to. Um, I have several close friends who've had hip replacements, which have gone spectacularly well. Um, and that has generally cost from a top surgeon that has generally run in the neighborhood of ten or $12,000. Um, I don't know what that costs in the U.S., but I have a feeling it's quite a bit more than that. So anyway, thank you, Dave Gray, for bringing up this subject.
and no doubt we'll talk about it more in the future, and I will bring a couple of people here and interview them so they can tell you what their process was and how they came to make the choice they did. So thanks so much.